Hi, and welcome to the Electronics and Programming Beginner's Guide. Today's topic is LCD screens. LCD screens are incredibly popular. They're in all kinds of different products, and they can add something to your project that's special. Your, your project can talk back to you, or you can use the LCD screen for debug purposes, that you can remove the screen once you're done. And you know when debugging, the L you can read out exactly what your code is doing, or if you encountered any errors uh, during your the execution of your code or debugging process, etc. What's really nice about LCD screens is the majority of them use the same chipset, and therefore they all mostly use the same protocol. So. Uh, this screen uh, talks in the same manner as this screen talks in the same manner as this screen. They all use, if not the same chipset, at least a chipset that's uh, modeled on the same kind of ideas. And the idea is the uh, parallel bus interface. So for this video, I'm going to break it down into several sections. Uh, the first thing we'll talk about is the pinout on the LCD, that you can see the strip of connections at the top and uh, how to connect these up and what this uh, strip means. Because to this connection setup is the same for uh, almost all LCDs. Uh, for example, this LCD, you can see that it has that same kind of a strip connection. But if you look on the back, uh, a different company took the LCD and made a little uh, interface board for it to make it a little easier to talk to. Uh, the next thing after the pinout, we'll talk about just a very brief introduction into the idea of digital communication. And then... Uh, We'll talk about the uh, how a parallel bus works. And finally, we'll wrap the whole thing up with uh, some general ideas of how to talk to the screen. So let's begin. The pinout for the screen has 16 pins, 1 through 16. And the pinout itself is fairly simple. It may look intimidating at first, but once you uh, understand what the pins are and what they do. Uh, it's a fairly easy work to wire up the screen. So the first two pins, pin one and pin two, are VDD and VSS, and that's ground and power. Very simple. Uh, something to watch out for is some screens are 5 volt and some screens are 3.3 .3 volt. So be sure to use the correct voltage for your screen. The next pin, and that is the VO pin, uh, this is the contrast pin for the screen. So you would wire this pin up with a potentiometer like that. The potentiometer goes between a VDD and ground and connects up to this pin and by adjusting the potentiometer you can change the contrast of the screen. If you already know what contrast you want you can just use fixed resistor values to set the contrast. Uh, the next pins are RS, RW, and E. RS is the register select pin, and I will. Uh, this is a control pin, and I'll talk more about that in the last section. Uh, RW is the read write pin, so this sets the direction of on whether you're writing into the screen or you're reading out of the screen. Uh, the enable pin is the pin you strobe to make actions happen. So next are the DB0 through DB7. I omitted the DB on the other pins because it just it's less writing. But uh, these are the pins for the parallel uh, bus. Uh, this bus is 8 bits wide. The uh, final two pins are the plus and minus pins for the LED backlight of the screen. Uh, same thing. Uh, the screens come in either 5 volt or 3.3 volt, and the voltage for these pins is going to be the same as the voltage for the, uh, these pins, and the resistor for the uh, current limit is uh, built right into the screen. So you can just apply a voltage directly to these pins. So this is how you would wire up uh, your screen. So uh, now let's talk about some uh, a basic introduction into digital communication. 
Digital communication uh, represents bits of data using zeros and ones. In reality, there is really no such thing as digital. Everything is analog, meaning there's some variation in voltages and levels and whatnot. So uh, digital communication is really an approximation. So how does digital communication work? Uh, normally, you will see a diagram that a graph that looks like this, where uh, your uh, y-axis is your voltage and your x-axis is time. So how do you represent a zero uh, using voltage digitally? Well, if you look at the data sheet for the screen, the data sheet will tell you that uh, this is a 3.3 volt screen and any voltage between uh, 0.6 volts and zero volts is good enough to represent a zero. So you can have a line like that, and this section will represent a zero. Next, how do you represent a one? Same thing, looking at the data sheet, you will see that any voltage above 2.2 uh, and up to 3.3 represents a one. So you're tempted to draw something like this, where you transition from a, oh, that's very, very crooked. Let me try that again. So you're tempted to draw a line that goes straight up like this and over and say that this represents a one. Well, unfortunately, that's very false because in the real world, nothing happens instantly. So instead of drawing it like that, you will have a line that at an angle transitions this way. So now this is a one. What is that? Any voltage between zero and 0 0.6 represents a, a zero, and any voltage between 2.2 .2 and 3.3 .3 volts represents the one. Uh, certain things to understand when talking about digital communication is that this transition time has to be taken into account. So when uh, sending data, the uh, the protocol that receives that data needs to uh, be able to compensate for the this transition time. And what we'll see uh, in the case of the parallel bus is this enable pin that is used to compensate for this transition. But uh, to, for uh, everything that we'll talk about from here on out, we can assume that uh, a zero is a low voltage and uh, a one is high voltage. If your screen happens to be a five volt screen, really the only difference is the upper limits are going to be higher up and maybe the uh, general limits will be spread out a little bit more. But uh, for to be sure, consult the data sheet for your particular screen. Parallel buses are fairly simple. You have your two devices that you want to connect together. Now, the first thing is between the two devices, one always has to be a master and one, the other one always has to be a slave. And we'll get to exactly why that is here in a second. But to connect the, uh, the two devices, you need at least one wire per bit of data that you want to send. So for example, if your bus is eight bits wide, you need at least eight wires to send that data because you're sending one bit per wire in parallel and that's where the bus gets its name. So then you would connect these two with eight wires. If you're not familiar, uh, this notation, the slash eight means a bus of eight wires. Uh, the reason why there always has to be a master and a slave is because the communication along these uh, eight wires uh, can happen uh, in both directions. So one of the two uh, modules that are talking to each other has to regulate uh, which direction the data is going in and uh, when the data is getting moved. So one way of doing that is normally to use an enable line. So you would have an extra wire, which is your enable. 
the idea being is that if the master wants to send data to the slave, it uh, sets uh, the data onto the 8-bit wide bus, and then it strobes the enable line, meaning it kind of does a, uh, a pulse. And that pulse lets the slave know that the data is ready to be read off of the bus. Uh, with the setup that I've drawn here, you can only send data in one direction, so the master can only talk to the slave, because the slave doesn't know when to talk back. So to get bidirectional communication, uh, you also need a read write line. And again, this really depends on the specific bus that you have. But uh, for example, if the uh, read line, if the read write line is held low, the uh, the data is being written to the slave. Or if the read write line goes high, the slave knows to get ready the data to send back to the master. Something else that's interesting about this bus is you can have multiple slaves sitting on the bus. So, and I'm just kind of going to pencil it in here. You can have another slave which connects to the same 8-bit bus. It, it connects to the same enable line, to the same uh, read-write line. But now you have one more line, which is the uh, chip select line. And what that chip select line does is that if, let's say, for example, the line is held low, this, uh, this slave, your, what's called slave number one, will respond. But if the line is held high, slave number two will respond. And so uh, that's the basic idea of a parallel bus. Uh, the bus doesn't have to be 8 bits wide. The bus could be 16 bits wide. The bus could be 4 bits wide. Uh, really, the width of the bus depends on the application that you're using it for and how much data you need to move back and forth. Now let's get to some specifics as related to the screen. First of all, the screen that we'll be playing with is a 2x16, meaning that the screen has two individual lines and each line holds 16 characters. These screens do come in a whole bunch of different sizes. Uh, the biggest being a 2 by 40, meaning two lines, 40 characters. And that's actually where the chipset is inherited from. Uh, each one of the characters on the screen is sequentially addressed. And uh, something that's kind of difficult to wrap your mind around is that you start with character 0 here, and then you get all the way out to character 39, and character 40 is the one that's... The, the next line. The reason for that, as I mentioned previously, a lot of these screens use the same chipset, which makes it really easy to talk to them once you know how, but just there are some idiosyncrasies depending on size. So something we talked about previously is that this uh, screen supports a parallel bus, and this bus is 8 bits wide. So uh, data comes in and out of the uh, screen via these uh, DB0 through DB7 pins. These are the actual data pins. So, and we've also talked about the enable line. Every time that the master, the screen's always a slave, wants to move data in and out of the screen, it will uh, uh, pulse or, uh, uh, what's that word? Strobe. That's the word I'm thinking of. It will strobe uh, the enable line. Now, uh, these uh, two other pins, the register select and the read write, we have, we've talked about read write before, that if uh, this line is held by the master uh, low or zero, uh, the screen is accepting incoming data. Now, if the uh, master wants data to come out of the uh, slave, it will hold this line high, and that lets the screen know to get ready the data to be transmitted to the uh, master. And the register select. Uh, the register select in this case is used to select where uh, data is going. So for example, if I want to uh, display a character and the screen actually has a whole bunch of uh, pre-made characters already programmed into it and there's a, uh, a cheat sheet. This came right out of the data sheet for the screen. If I want to display an A, let's see here, the a capital A is 
zero one zero 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 one. Uh, this gets ready uh, the A to go into the screen. Now there's a second uh, sheet that you can also find in the data sheet, looks like that, that gives you all of the commands that the screen will accept. So if I want to uh, send data into uh, the screen, I set my register select to 1, which means that I'm going to be uh, writing uh, letter information into the screen, and then I set my read write to uh, zero, and then finally I will uh, strobe the enable line, and the capital letter A would appear here. Then uh, internally to the screen, the counter for or the pointer, whatever you want to call it, that's pointing to the uh, data registers that are responsible for displaying the letters will increment one. And then if I want to display a B, I would change these last two, one, zero. And then I would uh, strobe the enable line again and a B would appear. In the simplest of nutshells, that's how you send uh, letters to the screen. Uh, some finer points are that uh, if the uh, register select pin is uh, set to zero. Now instead of sending letters to the screen, you can send uh, commands to the screen. And I said, I will leave it up to you to actually read the sheet of what different commands are, but uh, you can configure the screen for how many characters it holds, uh, how it displays the characters. Uh, the screen has a mode for uh, using a simplified parallel bus, where instead of using all eight, you're using uh, only four. Uh, you can choose where the cursor is on the screen to uh, type the information out differently. You can make the lines shift back and forth once all data is input into the screen. And so there, uh, these screens are very, very versatile. You can actually get the screen to write in the opposite direction. And the screen actually supports some characters, I believe, from Japanese. But I'm not 100% sure on that one. There's a whole set. And that's... Uh, a reason why you might want to write the characters in the other direction. Also, the screen actually supports creating your own characters, that the uh, this map of characters is not completely full, and depending on the screen, uh, on some of these you can actually create uh, several characters of your own choosing. As I keep mentioning, these screens are very, very versatile, and I just wanted to say that one more time. Uh, one way to talk to the screen is uh, the screens are considered fairly slow as far as how quickly you need to send the information to them. So you could bit bang one of these parallel buses. What I mean by bit bang is that you could uh, toggle the pins to zeros and ones and then create the strobe with the enable line entirely by just commanding the specific ports and the specific bits in the specific ports to create the bus. A uh, different way of doing it is uh, some PIC microcontrollers, like the uh, PIC24F, uh, supports a feature called the Parallel Master Port, which is a simplified way of creating a parallel bus, where all of the, the toggling is managed for you, where you can tell the bus that I want to send this byte of information, and I want to send it to... Uh, would say the, the, the register select zero, and then the bus will take care of all of the timing, all of the strobing, providing the information out to the bus, etc. Uh, something that I wanted to look at in my next video is the idea of a driver, uh, a piece of software that handles hardware, and uh, some of the, the principles and concepts of writing one, because uh, a very poorly written driver can really grind your software to a halt. So, uh, if you like my video, please uh, give me a big old thumbs up on YouTube. And if you have any questions, you're always welcome to leave them in the comments section on YouTube or in the comments section on my website. And always, uh, don't forget to subscribe.